Hi, so my name is Arabella or Janie, as some of you know me, um, and I'm going to try to change my slides. Um, and so I'm very interested in looking at how we interact with one another in a dialogue setting and how can we begin to, to model this? And so my, my field has become quite popular recently with the advent of ChatGPT. Everyone now interacts with some kind of dialogue agent, so that's exciting. But so um, some of my work is less focused on the sort of um, more question answering aspect. And I'm really interested in understanding how we as humans interact and how we adapt to one another in dialogue settings. Um, and I think like a lot of the work investigating human properties of interaction can lead to better and more personalized and adaptive models that can maybe serve us better in our day to day lives. Um, so what goes into that? There's some understanding of humans. There's some understanding of how models work. So language models work by predicting the next word given a context typically. And, we, you know, you can go into more detail with there. Um, and then we also need to understand how do humans perceive this dialogue that um, is being generated. Um, so um, taken together, hopefully this can lead to sort of my research interest of maybe we can get towards models with better adaptive human like capabilities. So I'm going to talk to you about one particular type of adaptation that's interesting, that in, which is in terms of language style. So when we speak to one another in conversation, we tend to adapt to one another at various different levels. So this can look like repeating one another's words to sort of show that we're understanding one another, just to show that we understand key vocabulary. Um, and this can vary depending on the speaker that you're talking to. So perhaps if you both speak in a very similar manner, then this can lead to um, increased ease of um, understanding one another, but how can we better understand how these differ um, so that we don't create um, dialogue systems that are sort of one size fits all. Um, so I'm presenting a bit of work that was um, done with colleagues of mine when I worked at the University of Amsterdam before coming to Aberdeen. Um, and so it was actually an interdisciplinary collaboration between our dialogue modeling group and um, some really interesting researchers in the School of Communication Research, sort of looking at this idea of if um, conversational agents are able to adapt in the way they interact with humans. So notably, this work was done in um, 20 and 21. Um, so it would be interesting to re redo this now um, in, in light of current advances. Um, so. Uh, so we aimed to, can I go back one? Thank you. Um, so we focused on users of different age groups to sort of um, try to address the question of perhaps maybe AI, the language of AI is quite a, a young language and we want to make sure that we have an inclusive um, language being produced by AI so that we to make sure and, or to explore whether this can um, improve interactions. Next slide. Um, so. Um, as Dimitra mentioned, in order to do this, we need to break it down into smaller subtasks. So first of all, if we're interested in making a model adapt to style specific features, we want to ask the question of can we detect those in text um, in order to both evaluate whether or not we create models that do that and in order to, in fact, train these models. Um, so next slide. Um, so we needed some training data and we made use of the British National Corpus, which was gathered um, from user submitted dialogues from different social de demographic backgrounds and also different ages critically. So we selected a subset of these dialogues containing only pairs of speakers of the same age with the idea that this and creating a separation with the idea that this will allow us to better extract distinct properties of language from these two groups. Next slide. Mm. So we trained a variety of different models to try and detect at the word level. So the transcriptions of these dialogues rather than speech or different elements. We're really looking at exactly the words of what was said between the groups. And we found that um, even relatively simple models. So the first row of the ones that say gram are the more simple models that are um, more based on count statistics. And then the LSTM and BERT are the more um, more recent BERT is a transformer model and ChatGPT is built on one of the more transformer type models. Um, so we found that actually even at the level of words um, that we we see quite high performance here, um, even compared to the larger models, which gives us an idea that detecting age related features is quite challenging um, and that there may be 
maybe parts of the language generated by these large language models that maybe aren't so age specific in the end. Next slide. Um, so we also then wanted to investigate where were these models wrong? So we're doing some analysis to understand, you know, what are the cases that are, that are difficult? So first of all, it's worth pointing out that dialogue consists of small utterances that are quite short, and that's not a lot of signal for you to detect um, information from. And so maybe even humans might find it quite difficult to say, right, that's definitely someone that's over 50 that said this. Um, so we find that actually the models um, do struggle to predict the 50 plus age group more, which is a bit in keeping if you with this with an idea that if you think about the training data that the large models are maybe trained on on the internet perhaps we have more um, um maybe more sort of um a, maybe a younger demographic that participate in online forums perhaps um but maybe not um it's an open question uh, next slide um so then we we did some analysis on what were the predictive features of these models and that can allow us to get an idea about what different vocabulary different speakers uses use and so in the psychology literature sometimes it's been found that um there are some key properties that do correlate with different age age groups in terms of the language they use maybe um older speakers are more likely to be more polite or use more po some more positive sentiment um but um, maybe younger speakers are more likely to use um, some more um, expressive language. Um, and um, so we find this in our data as well. Um, and so then it again raises the questions, you don't necessarily want your model to be generating inappropriate content when you're training it to generate more specifically to these different age groups. Um, but that's, so we remove those from our training data. So then we tried to train a model. Um, yeah, next slide, thank you. Um, and so we were interested in training a model in a more lightweight fashion. So sometimes you can train these models by fine tuning on top of the model um, with this new data that you have. But if you don't have very much data or you want to try and be um, more sustainable and and sort of move the model weights rather than update the whole model, you can make use of these effect, these um, techniques called plug and play language models um, and where you effectively steer what the model is generating towards the distribution of the target that you're choosing rather than updating the model to the specific data. And so then we have some examples of two different approaches to do this. And so one of the, the clear problems with some of these approaches is that if you're steering a model to generate to a certain distribution, sometimes you can have fluency trade-offs. So you might generate text that looks like or displays words that you're interested in, but it might do so in a much less fluent manner. Um, so we were interested in looking at the results of this. Next slide, please. Um, so I've pulled up some examples of the types of language that the more adaptive model generated. And I should add that we were looking at um, three different topics that were quite equally represented in the in the data set we were looking at for the three groups. Um, and so then I just picked out in bold some of the words that that the adaptive model seems to learn to put in um, for the different groups. Um, but as you're probably thinking, next slide, um, we also then asked some humans to, to, to rate our generations. Um, and humans found it quite tricky to, um, to differentiate between the two different age categories. Um, and so in the subsequent experiment where we're trying to find out whether this affects perception, perhaps the fact that it's at the the topic level and the dialogue level that we were looking at maybe we didn't have enough data to to make some findings but we do find that the more slightly more simple models produce um slightly more um fluent results and that sometimes um really steering a model to produce specific output can hurt a bit the generation which is interesting next slide um, so that was a whistle stop tour of a bit of research to sort of try to move towards the idea of generating getting to dialogue agents that can generate language in a more personalized or deliver content in a more personalized manner with specifically age in mind this time but i'm really interested in looking at how adaptation varies across different types of speakers beyond that um, and conducting more and analyzing more human data to to better understand how we can generate um, more appropriate text thank you very much for listening <laughs>